So here's the video I wanted to do for a while. So originally I was going to be writing the episodes, but I figured I'll, I'll hold off a wee bit until the whole season comes out. We're going to be talking about every head of a boss character, every main character. So, you know, um, the four main imp crew, Stolis, Octavia, Stella, and, you know, the villains. So, um, yeah, we're going to, we're going to begin this. So, yeah, I know one of these, one of my opinions on these characters is going to drive a lot of fans crazy. But, you know, what? I, I, I want news, and, uh, head of a boss is really big right now. And I also like it, so... Let's start with the beginning. Starting us off, we're going to we're, uh, hey, hey. Starting off, we're going to be talking about my favourite character in the show, Blitz, the always sound. Blitz is, um, you know, a cartoon Brandon Rogers, to say the least. He's, uh, in my opinion, the funniest. He has, so far, the most interesting story going on. And he has this on off thing with Stolis. And you know, Blitz is, you know, kind of the main character, but the main character is mostly the imp crew. And by that, I legit just mean Blitz and Moxie so far. So yeah, uh, I feel like Blitz, he's, he's the one who always gets the best one liners, he's the one with all the greatest jokes. Uh, he moves around like a beckon Looney Tune character. And yeah, he, like Brandon Rogers, you know, it, it doesn't feel the same as all the other Bran Rogers characters because just so Brandon's so good at making characters and Blitz definitely shows that. Mwah. Blitz gets a 10 out of 10 in my book. Up next, we have a character that, um, when I first heard his voice, I was thinking that sounds a wee bit familiar. We're going to be talking about Moxie. Moxie is, uh, I'm not going to lie. Perfect. Yeah, uh, Moxie, he's, um, he's really into musicals. He's good at killing. And, uh, yeah, he's like, he's like the straight man of the group. And, uh, by that I mean, you know what I mean by that. He's basically like, you know, let's be stupid, he'll go, right, that's just goddamn, that's goddamn ridiculous, we're not doing that. So, yeah, uh, Moxie, he kind of feels like, I originally thought this show was going to centre mostly around Moxie and Millie. Because, um, I thought it was going to be, be, like, mostly about them two in the business. Like, I, I knew Blitz was also going to be the main character, but I thought he was kind of, you know, he was going to be there to, like, you know, uh, tell a few jokes, make us laugh a wee bit, and stuff like that. So, Moxie is so far, definitely, I'm getting the most main character vibes out of. Like, you know, the main main character. I don't know why, because the show really paints that in splits, but I don't know why I'm feeling it from Moxie. But yeah, um, out of the, all the main imps, Blitz and Moxie are definitely the biggest two. They are getting the most screen time in episodes. And yeah, they're just so much fun to watch, especially with Richard Horvitz. Horvitz. Uh, one of them has to be right, I'm hoping. <laughs> and yeah, you know, 10 out of 10 for Moxie. Up next, we're going to talk about a character I feel like gets pushed to the side a lot, Millie. Now, I don't know why, Millie just... There's something about the actors that aren't giving Millie a lot of screen time. Like, even even when she gets her only beat plot, uh, most of the time, it's still not, she's still not getting a lot of screen time. Which confuses me, because she is a main character. Yet, she's being pushed to the side quite often, and I don't really understand why that's happening. Uh, Millie is one of the two characters that did get a voice change. She used to be voiced by the same person who voices Luna. And she, I, I, I prefer the new voice, to be honest with you. But, one of my main problems with Millie is the fact that she is often, you know, a bench to the side, whether it be she gets her leg thrown at a bear trap. When she gets thrown down at a bear trap, or um, I don't know, I don't know where she was during episode three. She was kind of just doing her own thing in the background with Moxie, and then Moxie got drunk, and the next thing you know, the final acts happen, and you're like, where were you? And yeah, Millie is a nine out of ten. Would be a ten if it wasn't for that fact. Now, let's piss off the internet. Yeah, Luna, 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 Luna. Luna's probably my least favourite character on the show, I'm sorry. There's just nothing interesting about her, in my opinion. She's just, you know, your stereotypical goth teenager stereotype. Uh, you know she cares, you know, you just know everything's... You know, you can see where her character's going a mile away. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the car some of the storylines aren't predictable, like, um... 
There's still like some blitz thing. That's going to go one of two ways. They're going to get a happy relationship or still this is going to die. Um, but still, that's interesting to watch. With Luna, I'm not interested in seeing where any of her stories go. Especially in episode 3. In episode 3, she pissed me off. I just got so sick of her. And uh, in episode 5, you could have cut her out completely and it wouldn't have made a difference. She's only there to help Striker get away. So, yeah, I um, don't get me wrong, her voice acting is good. Um, she, uh, she, she can't be helpful sometimes, like when she, you know, got the book and when she helped him escape from the Truth Seekers. But other than that, I feel like some episodes, she doesn't need to be there. Like in episode 2, she's not even there, but she still gets a line. You could have cut that out completely and it wouldn't have made much of a difference. Don't get me wrong, it was funny. But I don't know, I just feel like Luna is definitely the weakest character in the whole show. And it's not because, you know, of, um, you know, the fact that she's a stereotype. Because they have a character who's, who's like Luna, but done so much better. Who we're actually going to talk about right now. Octavia is Luna done right. They don't, you know, they don't force you to sit through a bunch of episodes of uh, Octavia moaning about how she dislikes Blitz and how she just wants a perfect family back. They get that done in one episode and it is amazing. Also, I really like Octavia's accent. I don't know why. I just do. Yeah, I, I would actually rather see a lot more of Octavia than a lot more of Luna. Because Octavia isn't getting much screen time either. She makes a weak cameo in episode 5. But other than that, we don't really see that much of her. I feel like she is going to come back again this season, for either in the final episode or the next episode. Maybe both, who knows? Yeah, uh, obviously Octavia is the daughter of Stella and Stolas. And I, I really enjoyed her in Lulu Dawn. You know, um, obviously there were some parts where I thought she was a wee bit too much like Luna. But yeah, I'm going to give um, Octavia an 8 out of 10. Also, by the way, Luna is uh, Luna's a 0 out of 10. Of course, we can't forget one of the favourite characters, Stolas. Now, at the start, I thought that Brock Baker was a better voice actor until I heard this song. And when creation goes to die, you can find me in the sky upon the lost day. And you will be okay. I think after now everyone knew that Bryce was the voice of Solus. So yeah, uh, Stolas, he started off as a gag character until episode 2, you know, makes you love him even more. And then he goes right back to being a gag character until episode 5 comes out, where you can find out that, no, not episode 5, episode 6 comes out, where you find out this guy can be goddamn horrifying. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I really like Stolas, I feel like he is a great character, he's lots of fun to watch. Um, you know, he, he's creepy as hell when he wants to be. And he does get one of the funniest jokes where uh, he goes in this long sentence, but most of it will be late. He also had my favourite joke in episode 1, where um, obviously there's lots of censoring coming from the phone, Blitz drops the phone, then a few minutes later Moxie runs past the phone and he's still fucking going. That's just great. So this 10 out of 10. Who's next, I wonder? I actually know because I'm the one making this video, but you don't. So we're going to talk about Stella next. Stella is a character who isn't used very often. She's only really in episode 2 and 5. And yeah, I feel like she's good. She, well, obviously she's not good, because if you've seen episode 5, you know what I'm going with. But yeah, um, what they're doing with her, they're doing it well. You know, uh, she obviously wants to this, you know, out in the picture. And uh, yeah, uh, she's, she doesn't seem to be a good mother either. By the fact she kind of just walks past Octavia while Stolas talks to her. Probably not a good wife either. Just by the fact she tries to kill her husband. And uh, before you say it, but Stolas cheats on her. And that's because she doesn't care that she that he cheats on her. He cares, she cares that it's, that it's with an imp. So yeah, I can't really see where this character goes. But due to the fact of not much screen time, I may have to bump her down to an 8. But you know... That's not bad, I'm very excited to see what they do with this character. Now let's move on to a few villains. So I'm going to talk about the Sherbs all together. Uh, because they're all kind of the same. I'd say out of all of them, the Yellow Chief's my favourite just because it's yellow. 
But yeah, uh, these three didn't really get a lot of, you know, development as characters. They're kind of just... Yeah, they're, 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 they're kind of just a foil to the imps, or when the imps were actually a foil to them. But, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see these guys come back. I don't know if, um... I don't know if I... I, I think we can wait for them until the next season, maybe. But yeah, uh... Cletus, Colin, and Keeney, I think her name is. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Yeah, these, uh, these three, you know, I feel like, um... If we got a wee bit... If we got to know them a wee bit more, and they got a wee bit more development, I feel like they could be very good characters. I can't wait to see how they find the Imps in later seasons. Or maybe even next season, or maybe at the end of this season. Who knows? But yeah, I feel like these three would be... Would, these three are definitely going to be great antagonists. And they're the main villains. Well, yeah, villains, I'd say. Of uh, episode four. There's not really much to talk about, because despite the episode being called Shuro, they don't really do much. But yeah, let's move on to another few characters. Alex Brightman. That's all I really need to talk about. Fizzle Raleigh is so far my favourite villain in the show. Don't get me wrong, I know there's a villain who, uh, there, there, there's a villain that's definitely cooler than him, but I might have a wee bit of bias just because he's played by good old Beetlejuice himself. I don't know why, I, he also gets my favourite song in episode 2. Ugly children hands in now I know the comments are going to be full of people going, oh no, you will be okay is better. Just let me enjoy Alex Brightman singing. Okay, it's Alex Brightman singing. I'm not going to pass up on that. I can't wait for this character to come back. Uh, this is actually the robotic version. I don't know if we'll ever see the actual version. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. It's up to Vivian and Brandon. But yeah, I feel like Fizzler all day. Uh, in my opinion, he was the standout thing of episode 2. He was uh, the thing I grew, I'd go back to watch a lot. Again, Alex Brightman, God tier voice acting, both horrifying but funny at the same time. I kind of got Joker vibes off this character. And yeah, I hope he gets more screen time in his next appearance. This Rolly, 10 out of 10. Also, if I have forgot to say what the rating is, because I've done that with Luna and the Shurbs now, I'm just going to put it up on the top, so forgive me for that. I'm shit at these kind of videos. So up next, we have... Blitz's ex-girlfriend, Veronica Mayday. I thought Veronica was a uh, Veronica's a good antagonist. I can't wait for her to come back. We do know she's coming back by this shot from the trailer, or maybe that's not her. Maybe that's her twin sister, Veronica. Uh, we don't know yet. But yeah, uh, Veronica. I feel like she was a great antagonist. In my opinion, she is definitely probably the one that. Um, was the funniest. Uh, I don't see in her and Blitz just insult each other, just the back and forth of that. And I hope we get more of that whenever she comes back. Yeah, Veronica, she gets a really good song in episode 3. Obviously, it's a failure compared to Mustang at all, but that's the honest, that's not going to do. And yeah, Veronica, uh, I personally think if she comes back, Stola should definitely meet her. I just want to see what Sto what what, what Stolas would talk to Blitz's ex about. I feel like that can either go one or two ways. Funny or absolutely heartbreaking. But you know, we're, we're going to have to wait and find out what happens. We're going to have to wait and find out what happens. Ross Camere, 10 out of 10 character. Now we have what is so far the most badass villain, Striker. Expertly played by Norman Reedus, who most people would know from The Walking Dead. Striker. Oh, what can I say this guy? This guy's an asshole. Uh, yeah, there's a big thing where Mox gets jealous of him because Striker is better than him at everything in every way. And, you know, I thought that was pretty cool until I found out he's trying to kill the boy Stolas. And I was like, oh, oh no, I don't like it. I, I'm not too fond of you, sir. And then he tries to kill, you know, Moxie and Millie as well. So, you know, well, it's kind of pretty cool. I feel like that was a wee bit mean, you know. That was a wee bit uncalled for, a wee bit rude. You know, but what can you do? I'm not an imp, I wasn't able to stop him. And yeah, Striker, um, I feel like he has a really cool design. He, his, his voice is fantastic. Especially his singing voice, let me tell you something. And yeah, I don't know what else to say about him. We know he's coming back. I don't know if Striker will be a seasonal villain. 
or if it'll come back in season one because I don't think Norman Reedus was cheap to get. Just you know, just just a little get a, have a little feeling about that, just a wee tiny feeling. Oh, but yeah, that's um, that's all I can really say. Striker ten out of ten, probably again the most badass villain and a lot of fun to watch. So despite this power up and not getting a lot of screen time, I want to talk about him anyway. Vortex. Now Vortex. He was okay, I thought, you know, he's, he's chill, but um, sadly he is part of the worst part of episode 3, which is Luna's plot. I just can't stand Luna, to be honest with you. Uh, but yeah, I feel like uh, Vortex, you know, could get a little bit more screen time. I feel like he will return, probably with Verosica. Uh, yeah, but he just seems chill as hell, you know, he doesn't care about the whole Verosica and Blitz feud. He's just doing his job, he's not paid to care. So yeah, if yeah, Vortex comes back... Hopefully he comes back in, in good thing. Hopefully we get to hear him sing as well, because if I'm not mistaken, he is played by the person who played Genie in the Aladdin in the uh, in the Aladdin musical. So um there wasn't much to say about Martha, so um I'm gonna talk about Agents 1 and 2, because I don't know their names. But these two are part of the Truth Seeker episode, which is the best episode so far. Yeah, these two, I really like them. They have some good back and forth with Moxie and Blitz. Uh, they're, they, they were really funny to watch, I love their accents. I feel like they'll make a really good foil to the imps, because now the imps, you know, they probably can't go up to the human world without fear of these two coming out of nowhere. And also, you have the Shurubs as well. But yeah, I, I, I hope these two come back. I don't know why, I just really want them to come back. Although maybe this time, you know, maybe don't capture Let's and Mox, because you already know you're going to get nothing out of them. But yeah, they now have recordings of all the characters, and I'm, I'm very excited to see where that storyline goes. So yeah, 10 out of 10 for these characters, and that's about it. See?